Hi, I'm Mark Latender, and today in VTA, I'll go over back office data grid organization and filters in your VTA learning management system brought to you by RISC. RISC, when compliance matters. Data grids in VTA are organized in parent, child, and grandchild relationships. For example, if I look at the competency profiles grid, this is considered the parent grid. If I open up a record, all the one-to-one -one relationship data is seen on the general tab of a record. So a competency profile can only have one name, one description, and one custodian. Whereas you can assign multiple profile groups to the competency profile, and you can assign multiple competencies to the competency profile. The one-to-one -one relationship information will always be found on the general tab of a record. The one-to-many data relationship is stored on the child tabs, or child grids. Some records will have additional one-to-many relationships. For example, a competency within a competency profile may have more than one named assessor. The named assessor is considered a grandchild grid of the competency record. If we look at the student's grid, a student can only have one name, but they may be on several teams, have multiple training history records, and may have several personal development plan items. So again, it's parent, child, and grandchild. Grid filters. Several of your data grids will contain possibly hundreds of records, and to save you some time from scrolling or searching, you can apply data grid filters to reduce the number of records found. For example, I might want to find out which of my full-time retail associates hired before the year 2000 prefer a receipt for training when it's charged who are employees who work for a specific primary supervisor. So to start reducing the number of results on a grid, I can start adding and applying filters. For example, I want them to be active. I know their job title. When using student groups as a filter, start typing the value, and as you see it become available from the autocomplete results selected from the list. I wanted their hire date to be prior to 2000. I'll select the comment filter and enter the term receipt to see if anyone who wanted a receipt has that noted. I only want to see employees, so I will select the employee user type. And finally, I know their primary supervisor's name. So instead of seeing 146 people, once applied, I can see two people who have a retail associate full-time position job title who were hired prior to 2000 that have noted that they want a receipt who are employees that work for Jack, the company manager. If I didn't want to limit the hire date and I don't care about the job title, I can deselect them, click apply, and now I can see everybody who is active has noted that they want a receipt, is an employee who works for Jack, the company manager. And I can deselect all of them to return to my original list. The way that you enter your filter criteria will depend on the type of data you are filtering. Checkbox fields on a record will provide a true false selector. Student group, performance manager, and primary supervisor filters will use autocompletes to display results for your selection. Date fields will allow you to set the parameter and select a date. Text fields will allow you to enter a filter term and control how it should be applied. You will find filters at the top of parent grids, as well as some child grids. Grandchild grids will not have filters. And that's all it takes to understand VTA data grid organization and applying filters to save time finding records. Thanks for watching.